Welcome to East Windsor Lincoln Technical. Myself, Mr. Nowak, and Mr. Rose off on the camera are going to go over our photovoltaic trainer, and today we're going to talk about the inverter charger. Uh, the inverter charger is uh, made by Schneider, and it is working in coalition with the system control panel and the charge controller. They talk to each other through this Ethernet cord here. So this Ethernet cord is connected right here, makes its way back through, and is going around to the back and going to the control panel, so the control panel can interact with the inverter charger. There are no controls, uh, manual controls on this other than to turn it on and off and uh, to equalize the battery, um, that's about it. Other than that, all your controls are through the control panel itself. So you're going to have to have some kind of a control panel. That could be a handheld or it could be a remote device like this. Inside the electrical workings here, you can see the relays and the transistors and the, uh, the inductors that are at work. But down here is what I want to show you, the connection. So you're going to come and connect these. On the left-hand side, you have a black, red, and a white. This 120, 240 volt system is what's going to supply your AC loads. So these three wires are going to connect to your AC loads and they're going to head out. These two wires here are your grid connection because your grid is only 240 volts in, right? So 240 volt single phase, no need for the neutral there. So you only have the two wires here for the grid, three wires here for your AC loads. They're gonna travel down here through this channel and make their way in here along with other wires coming from other pieces of equipment. Now up here in the top, these three breakers control the AC loads, all right? So you have, again, this two wires here are the AC output loads, meaning that from the inverter, power goes to these wires and to this breaker. And if you turn this breaker up, that means that the inverter is supplying power to your AC loads. These black and red wires are the ones that came from our load center. All right, they're heading back over to our load center. And this is joined with this other breaker here because if I don't want to give power from the inverter, what I use is this bypass switch and I push it up and down, this lock prevents one of them from being up at the same time as the other one. You can have them both off. That's not an issue. But only one of them can be up at a time. This one can be up, or 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 this one can be up. But not both at the same time. That's the key. All right? Now, if I have this one up here, what I'm doing is I'm feeding the AC loads from the grid. The grid is coming from this junction here. That's these wires that are located back here and they're making the way back out through the disconnect on the uh, trainer over there. The grid comes in and comes to these two breakers. This breaker here in the center feeds the AC loads. This breaker here feeds the inverter. So if the inverter is getting power from the grid to charge the batteries that you have, so if you have a battery set up with an inverter, this is an inverter charger. It doesn't just invert the electricity for uh, DC to AC. It also takes the AC, uh, the DC, the AC grid and changes it, rectifies it to DC to charge the batteries if the batteries are low. So you can just plug it in to your utility grid and charge your batteries if your solar's out and you want to save that battery power for emergency systems. So you can use it for emergency settings. So this breaker here is turning the grid on to the inverter, and those were those two wires that I showed you down here. And then the three wires coming out are feeding here. Now, I'm not talking about it, but let's talk about it, the neutral bus. So up here on the top, you have the neutral bus, and you'll notice that there's insulation here because this is a sub to the main panel. So this insulation here is preventing these from touching, and this neutral here is coming to feed this, and all the other neutral loads from the disconnect here, because the disconnect is our main service. And from this here, this is the load center heading to the AC load center. They're getting fed from this bus. Now, in the center, we have a ground bus, but we have two ground buses. We have a ground bus here, and then we have our negative terminals. Our negative terminals are the terminals for our um, DC load. Now, this is where the DC load gets connected to ground, because this is bonded to that, and the service is all connected, so you see the ground screw here and here in the, the insulation that's connecting this plate here to the plate behind it so that the negative terminals here on our battery are grounded at this point. So everything on our DC load is going to connect here. So this white wire connected here is going to our charge controller where the PV is coming from. And then there's another white wire. Um, oh. The other white wire is going straight to our charge controller, I forgot. That goes right to the charge controller. This white wire here going to the charge controller is a connection from the PV modules. This one here is a direct connection from the battery. I'm sorry, this is where the battery connects. So this is the battery's negative connection to the charge controller. 
and these two large wires, one of them is this one here on the right is for the batteries themselves, so that goes down to the battery. The one here on the left is for the battery connection to the inverter. The inverter can pull a lot of power on the battery at once, especially if you have a surge capacity. So that means you need a much larger wire for the voltage and the current that's going through it, or the power. So that wire comes in here, and under here at the bottom of the inverter, we have these two large lugs that are used for connecting the batteries directly to the inverter. Uh, that's the positive and the negative terminals on the battery that are going straight from here to the inverter. Now the reason they go through this distribution panel is that you need to make sure that you have safety. And safety means that you've got to disconnect the batteries from the inverter. You have to be able to connect the inverter from the solar charge controller, the charge controller from the batteries, the PV modules from the charge controller. All of them have to be able to separate from each other. So you have your breakers down here. These three breakers are just for the DC loads. Right? This first breaker here is the power from the battery. So the battery it's coming up here, and it has a direct connection on this uh, bus right here. That's this red wire, direct positive connection to the bus. We have a jumper wire here that connects that direct connection from the bus here to this breaker. That connects the batteries to the uh, charge controller. So if I turn this breaker up, I'm bringing battery power to the charge controller. The second small breaker here is for the PV modules. The PV modules also need to be able to be disconnected from the charge controller. So I have this red wire here at the bottom coming from the DC combiner box and go into this and then from the DC combiner box into here and then from this breaker into the charge control. So this guy would turn the PV modules on to feed the charge controller, keeping in mind that the combiner box also has breakers because each of the individual panels that we have set for our solar modules have to be disconnected from the load center. So you can separate the modules from the load center, you can separate the modules from the disconnect, uh, the charge controller, you can separate the battery from the charge controller, and this large one here separates the battery from the inverter. So the inverter connection to the battery is also separated by a breaker. Every one of these gets separated. Off the inverter, the breakers here separated from the grid and from the AC load. So basically this whole panel is just set up so that every single piece of equipment can be separated from each other. And along with that separation, I want you to notice that on the very bottom, we have another ground bar. This ground bar here is for the AC grounding loads, because keep in mind, the AC disconnect is the grounding service for the AC load, where this bar here is the grounding service for the DC load. And they're the same ground, keep that in mind, but your neutral connections cannot connect to your ground connections at any point other than the service point. So that means that these neutrals have to stay separate from this ground, even though these can share the same ground source. This guy here needs to stay separate from this. So your, your DC loads grounding wires are connected here and your AC grounding lines are connected here. Now it's really just like one of those safety organization things, but it's a good idea to keep to the pattern so that people who come up here can understand what you've done and the labels all make sense.